This is the Oakland Podcast, featuring Morgan Brown and Michael Yu. Welcome to the Oakland Podcast. This is part two of our part one and part two series of mental health. Yep. I am Morgan Brown. Michael Yu. And I'm the pod father. And we're going to dive right in. Yeah, we're going to dive right in. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to part one, listen to part one. Yes, part one. Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just a, it was just like so like knee slapping fun times. It was so, it didn't feel great <laughs> at all. Just a bucket of jokes. <laughs> it didn't feel great at all. Bucket yeah, of exactly. jokes. Yeah. Um, but today we're going to talk yeah. a little bit about, especially with the, the weather turning. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Do you have any like friends that have had the, what do they call it? Seasonal affective yes. disorder, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Every Brazilian I know yeah. Yeah. who's relocated to Vancouver, yes. the right. winter hits and they are so upset. Like, yeah. they're so depression. used to so much sun. Yeah, right. it's like yeah. depression. Well, yeah. isn't it a vitamin D deficiency yes. for the most part? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I take vitamin D every morning. Yeah. Um, that's how many do you take? Much. I take 4,000 IUs. Good. Ooh. Yeah. How, much yeah. Do you, how many do you take? I take 5,000. Whoa. Okay. Actually, I take 6,000. <laughs> I'm, I'm only doing 2,000. No, I feel like I should no, 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 step no, no, it yeah. up. Yeah. Come and on. I do zinc, yeah, which so has been I. my latest. Yeah. Called a a magnesium. A lozenge or like. Citrite. Yeah. Which is awesome for arthritis, FYI. What? You should be on that. Is it? Wait, yes. what is it? Who? Because I have arthritis in my knees too. Oh. And uh, from biking and stuff. So that's amazing. What is it? Wait. Magnesium citrate. Citrate. Magnesium you get, you get citrate. arthritis from biking, like Peloton? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. I uh-uh. used to, when I was a bartender, I used to come home and ice my knees. Really? Because I was always running around. I just like didn't care. I just was like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And just being on the flat surface, I should be wearing orthotics like you. Really? I should be. Yeah. <laughs> then you'll be part of the cool gang. <laughs> the orthotic, <laughs> orthopedic shoe gang. <laughs> and then yeah. I think most people should be taking a lot of vitamin C yeah, right a lot of now. C, like, yeah. I mean, I'm like a mm-hmm. hundred. You know, zinc raises your testosterone level. Ooh. Really? Just it's also good you know. for your like bones and stuff, right? Like your bones yeah, and your yeah. skin. It's good for your immune system skin. for sure. Like yeah. I started, uh, is that know, B12? B12 is really good for your immune yeah, system. Yeah. It's yeah. good for your hair and nails too. Yeah. 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 I, you know, in a, former, in a former <laughs> life, I was, I used to work at a vitamin store. Did yes, I share, have yes, I shared this? Yeah, yes. I don't know if Popeyes, I shared this on the phone. Yeah. No, I worked at this place called Alive Health Center. Oh. Um, and basically it was a, uh, it was a, a vitamin store. I used to, um, yeah, I used to like sell protein powders and. <laughs> oh, there was, there, they yeah. have one of those in Prince George, I think. Oh, okay, and my dude. dad, that, that was like my dad's favorite store growing yeah. up. And oh. like, yeah, I remember going there and I wasn't allowed to have, I was like allergic to chocolate and like right. milk growing up. And so we'd go there and what? that would be my like, I could get carob bars and I'd be like, sweet, yeah. getting carob bars from the alive <laughs> store. Isn't that better funny? than yeah. chocolate. No, it it's, is, it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> so, what do you say about his like Mr. Okay. Vitamin store? Mm-hmm. What do you say about all the news and like the whole thing about that they're filled with like cardboard and like they're not actual vitamins and all that so stuff? So I, I, you, you got to get a, you got to get the higher quality ones because some of, so for example, I don't believe in taking anything that's, um, you know, in those tablets. Okay. So like anything that's in a tablet, like this is just, just I'm, your, no, no expert, is, disclaim, no. disclaim, disclaim, don't sue me. Um, <laughs> but anything that's in a hard tablet, um, it's really hard for the body to digest. It's like a rock. Yes. So this is kind of a disgusting story, but I have a client that um, clean septic tanks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have ha- fancy clients like you, Morgan. <laughs> oh, I, know, I, I know where this is yeah. going. And he cleans septic tanks. And basically he said the thing that's in a lot of the septic tanks are multi, like these thick, big Centrum multivitamin things that are just like... Ew! Yeah, uh, so gross. basically I only get either like... Um, uh, like veggie cap um, yeah, vitamins veggie cap, yeah. or I actually will take liquids. And- That's like nature's bounty. That's what their whole like, yeah. like guys, thing is. How do you guys take your vitamin D then? Is it like liquid? liquid? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. My my vitamin D is liquid. Yeah. But it's what veggie, it's a veggie tablet or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So my mine is, mm. yeah. So I get, I, everything I get is like liquid or it's in like a powdered form. So like yes. it, I take my zinc in a lozenge. So it's, cool. uh, yeah, so you know, because it gets a it, it gets it actually it goes into your thing faster. That's yeah. the whole point, right? Yeah, it gets in faster, and also it's just it's easier to, uh, for the body to digest as well. So, yeah, so you know, I every morning I take my uh, you know vitamin D, I take my vitamin C, I take my zinc, and I take my um, uh, they call them essential fatty acids. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, um, salmon DHA. oil. Yeah, I take I don't do the fish oil stuff. I do 
my wife is uh so there's like an algae DHA type of thing okay. that I take and it's oh yeah good. veggie yeah. yeah 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 um I like I'm surprised you haven't noticed how good my skin looks you always have good skin <laughs> you've always had good skin I don't think I've ever seen you have bad skin this is coming from a guy that does not wash his face hey, at all hey, okay let's, let's edit that <laughs> <laughs> hey, once you look like once you get it's not fair yeah. because I put medicated stuff all over my face yeah. to get it look looking like this <laughs> and he doesn't wash his face <laughs> no I actually don't believe in too much soap yes. I used to have a lot of eczema growing up eczema and mm. like yes. skin issues yes and so I stopped going I stopped like doing super hot showers I do a really like cold or cool shower yeah mm -hmm. the and, heat right and yeah and then yeah. I don't use any like kind of uh, soap products and stuff like that because it really dries things out. It just smells like the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you've never smelled. <laughs> He's never smelled that. I smell like nothing. He no. just smells like nothing. Yeah. He smells just like nothing. Neutral smell. Yeah, hey? like a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't smell him coming. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you can't. <laughs> but that's a really good point. And I think what, when we talk about mental illness and mental health, you know, one of, segue, big, one, of the, <laughs> yeah. one of the big things that we talk about is your supplements too. That's a big part of it. You know, some people do choose to get the vitamin D, some of the things that we're lacking in our environment to fill that void and make sure that you're on that kind of healthy yeah. way. Well, there's something that, you know, I, a part of it is, is it, I believe that it actually works, but then there's a placebo effect to doing a lot. Of, have you heard what the placebo effect is? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, placebo what? effect is basically like, for example, like you take a pill that says I'm healthy today. Oh, you mean like, your mental, you're, you're mental, your like, mental brain. Yeah, yes. So it's kind of like, it's weird. It creates like this mental state where, you know, today I'm going to be healthy or like I have yeah. a strong immune system because I'm taking this vitamin D today. So you, you know, you, you know, your immune system spikes, your mood changes. And it's true. yeah, it, you know, there's that placebo effect of like, you know, they say like they always do these um, with drugs. They always do these double blind studies. And so double blind studies are like they'll test a drug and then they'll just give someone like a salt pill or a sugar pill. Yeah. And yeah. they and it's the not the same that, effect. And it's it, sometimes it has the same effect, but it's always weird. The Even with the placebo, it still has an, a positive impact. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, I yeah. don't I mean, I don't care if I'm getting better yeah. some, some way because it's a placebo or because it actually works. Right. Who cares? It's all about the yeah, results. Yeah, it's all about right? the results, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that for sure. I feel like you just I think I feel like every parent should just be like doubling up on their <laughs> their vitamins right now. Cause yeah. if you put them in preschool or any yeah, type you of just school. Had them, you just had Quinn sick, right? Sick Quinn was sick like right away. And I was like, what the hell? And because everyone told me about this. And I was like, no, yeah. that's never going to happen to my son. He's super healthy. Yeah, he's so healthy. <laughs> and I was like. He's a Viking. Then of course, like, <laughs> yeah. because they're with so many, like, yeah. so many kids isn't only like 12 kids. It's not that many kids. But there's, there's always there's one of them There's always, that's always sick. one of them sick. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to get it. And, I, and it's, and then even Arlene came over and Kate was sick, came over to my house. I was like, Kate is sick at my house. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. But you, you but know, isn't it, it's, it's good to kind of build is, the immune system up a bit, right? Try and have a sick kid. Yeah. It's, it's not ugh, fun. Worst. Right. Mm -hmm. You basically have to lock them in a room. Mm. I've decided like I've, before I just put him on his couch and like let him play. Right. Now I'm like, nope, I'm pulling my Deborah Brown, my mom's thing she would literally not let us leave our room until we went through like the contagious part okay so my mom would like be like you're gonna have two, i'll bring you everything i'll bring you your soup i'm gonna bring your crackers i'm gonna bring your ginger ale i'll bring you whatever you need right. but do not leave this room <laughs> yeah and she, it worked because there was three of us and if one of us was sick all of us was sick so he she would always make sure that we just like would stay in our room oh really yeah in a whenever jail one of, yeah whenever one of my i hated school <laughs> so much whenever like my, my <laughs> sisters or my brother got sick I would like immediately like hey let me share that orange juice with you <laughs> hey, let me, hey are you done with that uh, old soup I was like just drink it <laughs> you just lick this glass here yeah I was just like uh, you're like I, I, you're like, I need to get, I need to get out of this yeah, glass I was like so, and my so my brother and I were always sick at the same time oh that's so Arlene fun Arlene and I were always sick at the same time and but I was that's like, fun too with your like sick family yeah you know what I mean but so then I, having a lot is too much for me yeah yeah mm. totally so funny Let's dive in. Sure. Let's, let's dive, dive in. in. So some t tips to have better mental health that you can just implement in your day to day. And I think this is kind of to your point. It's that placebo effect, but also your habits. Like what mm -hmm. are some things that are you can put in as a habit to make sure that you get to that top tier mental right. health? One of them is 
make social connection face to face a priority. Face to face a priority. Do you feel like that helps? <laughs> face to face time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, more more so for some people than others. Some people need it more, but mm-hmm. like, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Like talking to people, hanging out. Mm-hmm. Like Ugh. the first time after like our first big lockdown that I like got, we got together with, a, you know, social distancing in the alley with a bunch of neighbors for some beers. It was like, this is really nice. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I know, like breathe, you know, it's it so was good. such a good thing for the mental health. Mm-hmm. I think some people like my husband really likes hockey, mm-hmm. like his hockey time. Right. He like enjoys those moments that he gets to connect with like all the same kind of guys and like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you need to have those social them. connections. For me, I really enjoy like coming into work and gabbing with kind of everybody mm-hmm. and what do you think, Mike? Do you think that helps your mental connect, your mental oh, for stability? Sure. You know, th- you know, there are typically two types of people. There's a, you know, an introverted person and an extroverted person. And a lot of introverts feel like they don't need anybody. Like I have some friends that are very introverted and, you know, they, they even admit to themselves, like so- sometimes they're spending a little bit too much time alone. Yeah. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. let's go for, let's go for a beer. And they're like, I haven't seen anyone for a week. And then, what? Uh, and then, you know, and they're really, sometimes they're, pretty down and so like Mm -hmm. um you know and we get together and and have a great you know conversation uh lighthearted or very uh deep Mm -hmm. and yeah they it really does change their uh their psychological state and it helps to you know um look at things from a different perspective as well and Mm -hmm. you know even just even just listening to to uh you know to someone and if you know they're going through a challenge or something like that is uh and you're able to kind of contribute in a little way and say, hey, you know, have you tried this? Have you thought about this? Um, you know, I think that, that that's super rewarding. I feel yeah. like a lot of people come to Mike when they're down. <laughs> well, it's funny. Just like right before well, we got funny. here. Yeah. Just before we got here, I had a meeting uh, with uh, a colleague and yeah, they were just going through, struggling through a really hard time. And so we've we really kind of dove in to what's, you know, what's happening. And you know, I feel like a lot of people in in real estate they either feel like um, uh, they feel like I feel like the successful people feel like an imposter, yes. <laughs> and then the people that aren't doing so hot feel very insecure and Super. very kind of like they're bit, you know when we talk about those hierarchy of needs like they feel like really unstable, and so you know when you when you feel that instability. Um, in a lot of cases, it's like, you know, it's putting structures and good habits in place mm-hmm. and, you know, and putting those kind of practical tools together that that help uh, that help to kind of slowly but surely create a stable ground. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It, you know, it takes time. And um, but, uh, you know, it, it's it when you see like I've seen some really cool stuff with some of our agents that we've had where they've completely transformed from being completely insecure, completely unconfident, dead broke. Yeah, really. To like yes. buying their first place, like getting married, getting married, having kids, having kids, taking their mom to like, you know, on a trip, just the two of them. Like, I'm just like, oh my God. And I remember talking to like five years before, talking to them about this as a dream. And I'm totally, and they're like, this is not going to happen for me. And they, they've told, they said, Mike, this is not going to happen. I already know it's not going to happen. Yeah. I said, you know, it's one minute, one day at a time. Just like we got to focus on what we can do today. Yes. And then, so like, you Be know, present with it. Yeah. So, and it really worked out well. Um, and I, I feel I, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it was, it was a really great meeting because I, I felt a lot of hope and I have a faith that he's going to do amazing things. For and that, sure. and yeah. that's like just staying connected, talking to somebody, uh, which is just a huge way of just being able to connect with somebody and hopefully they'll kind of, Lean into your stories and yeah. what you want to do. The second one is stay active. Mike has a, a new home gen. Yeah, I do <laughs> as have your a new social home. Ooh, and his yeah. social media. I'm like, I don't even know. I like, I like watch it through his social media. I'm like, I'm like his best friend. I'm like, what the hell? I gotta come over and see your home gym. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you're not allowed over. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want to go over. Okay? I'm kidding. Jesus. <laughs> I have a home gym, but it's like quarter of the size. Uh, yeah, because I, <laughs> I saw yours. I saw yours. I'm like, I gotta be better than this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
one out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what did you get? Okay, yeah, I got the version yeah, that's yeah, slightly yeah. better. Staying active. <laughs> staying active. Yeah, so staying active. Um, uh, so this is something that I really learned oh. from uh, uh, Tony Robbins yes. uh, when I was, uh, you know, did one of his cla- courses, right? Yeah, I did, yeah. I, I did. I went to a big seminar of his, but I've also, like, he was like my, like, driving buddy companion i used i um i had a when i was this new agent um i shouldn't probably admit this but when i was a new agent uh one of my clients uh they needed me to clear out uh, their garage and they had like a mini fridge <laughs> there and they're like mike take the mini fridge i was like what am i gonna do with this mini fridge <laughs> and then one of the staff at the brokerage i was working with is like my son's looking for a mini fridge and i was like here perfect let me give it to you and i'll bring it to your house and then she brought it to my house. Or I brought it to her house. And she's like, I want to thank you so much. And she gave me all like a stack of these burned CDs of of like Tony Robbins, the greatest hits. <laughs> and she gave me like a big stack of these things. And I was like, whoa. Um, and I listened to them like over and over and over again. And one of the things that he teaches is uh, your physiology. Your The motion is your emotion. And this is like... <laughs> <laughs> So your physiology <laughs> has so much to do with your psychology. So it always mm-hmm. starts with your physiology and kind of how you're presenting yourself. So it's being active, um, you know, working out, um, you know, and, you know, making the body feel good. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole thing with Lululemon. It's sweat once a day. And I totally believe right. in that. I believe that that it like gets you going. And, and the, I personally am a totally different person if I don't work out. Like yeah. I am... Like, you know, this energy you're saying that I have, if I don't have that workout, I'm drained Mm -hmm. in my day. And even if it's like 10 minutes, like today I had, I was in between, I had a late night yesterday because Lenny had woke up because she had her shots and she was just like warm. So I was up with her and, uh, yeah. And I, and I was like, I got to get my workout in. It was like 15 minutes, but it was like really good. I needed to, I needed that activity, especially with this weather. I was like, I need to get out, do something. So that's a great way. And like for people that I know that have dogs, uh, you know, going out for big walks is a huge mm-hmm. thing, right? Going in any type of thing where you're just getting your body moving. Yeah, totally. And I think that that's a, you know, there you can always find time. A lot of people think that they're too busy to no. work out. And, you know, it's, it's there. You can always find time to, you know, for 15 minutes or, you know, like going for a walk mm-hmm. or, um, you know, sometimes for myself when I, so we've had like, a really hard time in the, you know, in the evenings with Soph trying Mm -hmm. to get her to sleep and stuff like that. So I've actually like taken Soph, I put her in the stroller and like gone around the block, like, you know, a little jog around the block and stuff like that. Cause I, you know, there's, there's, there'd just be no way I can like bank off 20 (laughs) minutes of, cause she just, if you put her down, she just screams nonstop. Mm, I've heard this. (laughs) (laughs) So like, I was like, there's no, I'm going to have no chance. I got to get to the office early. So I just would. Yeah. You need to get your activity in. Yeah. You know, like fortunately enough, we got, um, uh, one of the strollers that has one of those hoods on it. So Mm -hmm. like, yeah, so Mm -hmm. she's not wet or anything. And I'm just kind of just like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. I just, they love that too. Yeah. And they 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 love it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, They love it. Yeah. And they, they they don't cry when it's, yeah. It's the best thing. Yeah. The stroll, the walking with the stroller, parent tip. (laughs) (laughs) Some people, some kids don't like strollers. (laughs) Some kids don't like strollers. Some kids don't like strollers. No. They don't like strollers. They like to be up on their, like on the chest. Like for Lennon, she would rather be like, in the kangaroo pouch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I just be like, walking. Oh, okay. Which yeah, is so like that's good. The same, that's same thing. Good. Yeah. Outside. Just outside's calm. Does that hurt your back though? No. No? Makes but it I have a stronger. strong ab. My back is connected to your to yeah. your, your abs. Yeah. So it's like, as long as you just constantly work on that, that's fine. Anyway, let's <laughs> go over that. <laughs> so uh, the next thing is take that relaxation, pra- like do a re- relaxation practice on a regular basis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you do, Brandon, to relax? What's your thing? I don't know. Let's give people let's give people some suggestions on relaxation because I think people think it's always just like a massage. I <laughs> don't really do, honestly don't really do anything to relax. I um I have like at the I I have things I like I the end of the night I will once I'm finished doing all my work I'm finished cutting things from my studio and whatnot. All I always like watch one episode of some show before mm-hmm. going to bed. Um, nice. That's pretty much. The only kind of routine thing I have for like relaxing, but I'm not really, I've never really had issues with being high, strung or anxious or anything. Yeah. So I don't really, I feel like I should start, I've, you know, I'm looking at a 
learning how to doing you know meditation and stuff mm-hmm. like that because I've heard it's so good for your just relaxation and mental health. But right now, I don't really do much. What about you guys? What you do guys you do? Doing what stuff? do you do to relax? So for for me, you know, a couple things I. I I do, um, I do meditate and I do kind of take a quiet moment every day. Um, that's normally, eh, I'd say at least 10 minutes. And so, mm-hmm. so a big tip for me is to, to get off of any technology. Mm-hmm. So like, I know I, I had an agent suggest the Headspace app yeah. for me before. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Lish. Alicia Sander told me like, Mike, you got to get this Headspace app. I <laughs> love it. And I did it, um, you know, for 60 days. That was the free trial. Um, <laughs> I was like, I have to start paying. I can't do this. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. out I'm, out. I'm, I'm out. out. I'm out. I'm out. This is it. <laughs> like, can I sign up under a different email and do it again? <laughs> but uh, I, I, so the, so I. It was, I was a prelude into your meditation. Yeah, it was yes. a prelude, prelude, prelude into it. And then basically I noticed that, um, you know, by being attached to technology, like it, 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 there were some good things. It was a pause. It was a break. It was something that I could. It's funny. You get I I get ideas about work or about my relationships and stuff like mm-hmm. that when I'm not thinking about them specifically in yes. many ways. Like mm-hmm. showering, as yeah, you said exactly. before. Yeah, when, mm-hmm. yeah. So you know, so I always take at least ten minutes a day to kind of sit in silence. Now I've been I've been doing it with Soph. So mm-hmm. like when Soph falls asleep, uh, so I put her in that carrier, and then when she falls asleep, I'll just um really, I'll just kind of walk around. Mm-hmm. Um, without any device or anything like that, uh, going and humming off and just, you know, just either repeating a mantra, mm-hmm. which nice. uh, a lot of, uh, people will do or, you know, in, in quiet, just in quiet and just, you know, love that. let ideas come your way. How about you? Morgan? Um, I, it's funny. I think about my husband about relaxation when I brought that up in my mind because his he relaxation. He's lazy no, <laughs> it's beyond. Yeah, he's such a lazy guy. Um, <laughs> when I think about relaxation, now let me tell you who I know. My pro. <laughs> you know what? He really gets relaxed listening to music. Like mm-hmm. I, it's funny. He, I think because he was raised in a household with a musician, he always had music on. Right? Like mm-hmm. there was never a dead tone in this. Even if you go there now there's always music playing. Like there's, right. you just hear it. So I thought about us, like as soon as we like come back home from something or whatever, he just puts on music and it just becomes this like relax mode for him. And, you know, like he listens to new music. Do you hear this? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, go away. <laughs> but that was like his relax. For me, it's a bath. Um, it's always been a bath. I mean, mm-hmm. I, put, I put do Epsom salt. I think I, cause I work out and, you know, and I'm carrying my child and I'm on the phone and so I do like a lavender relaxation thing and I, oh, yeah. and I do good. that. I just yeah. chill and I just chill. And even if it's like 10 minutes, mm-hmm. I just ask my husband, like, just give me 10 minutes. <laughs> give me 10 minutes. Just get in the bath. Just take come your back damn out. headphones off. <laughs> yeah. Give me 10 minutes. I, just give me 10 minutes. <laughs> and that's where I, obviously it's, I don't put on, bring any of my device inside. I just kind of take a second and I, and I do breathe, I do breath work when I'm in the bath. So oh, I really? do a lot of, like breathing in, breathing out, you know, I have this four, seven, eight thing, which is What's basically, four, seven, eight? so you yeah. breathe in for four seconds, like four seconds, then you hold for seven seconds, seven seconds held, and then eight seconds to exhale. And it just becomes this like, yeah, it just it get, puts me in a good light mood. Yeah. And then I kind of feel high at the end of it. Because <laughs> you're like, nice. really, you're hot yeah. and you're like breathing. It's a lot so of oxygen. It's a too. lot of oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's me. That's me. Yeah. So that's my relaxation. And for some people, it's, you know, having a, a glass of wine or right. just taking a second. Yeah. I, I feel like you got personally and everyone has their own way, but I, you got to detach from devices mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that, though, because I feel like, um, like, yeah, I think that that's, that's an important yeah. thing to kind of try to detach yourself a little bit from technology. And that's when that, like really cool ideas come your way. That's what I find. Yeah. It's, it's uh we, to our point that we talked about, we live in the city that is constantly lit up. Right. Like, it's like, you feel that, ta- that kind of energy in mm-hmm. this space. But um, we were just at another place recently and like there was, it was like so scary because there's like no lights, no air pollution, like no <laughs> light pollution. But then it kept you so grounded. You just were so in that earth and my brother and sister all now live up in a Soyuz and they, they're they like, you can hear a pin drop. Like it's so quiet mm. up there. Yeah. And it's like a constant 
hum of like relaxation there. And I think in a big city like this in New mm-hmm. York and Toronto, whatever it is, you need to take a minute to just get yourself there. Yeah. So that's important. Um, eat brain healthy right. diet to support strong mental health. That's mm-hmm. a big one. Yeah. Eating well, people. Totally. Yeah. I think we can say that like firsthand with a lot of realtors out there right now, they are always on the go. Yeah. And yeah. they make excuses. Right. And they go to McDonald's. Yeah. Been there. Done that. <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah, we all have uh, <laughs> supersized that fries. <laughs> it's so true. Actually, I, I, I had a coupon come in the mail and there's like an A&W coupon. I was like, mm. I totally want to eat this A&W Yeah, Yeah, I, I bought that from McDonald's too. And I'm like, two can dine for whatever. Yeah. And I was like, that's, for, that's for one. <laughs> that's just for me. Just give me a supersized <laughs> coupon. And like, oh, yeah. well, you come again with a two for one and you, you and your wife must love McDonald's. Yes. Like, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> but we do. We get to that point. <laughs> a healthy way is for some people, I know it takes a little bit more time, but just like packing yourself a lunch is yeah. really important. Right. It like So brain healthy, I think that there's certain, um, and you, you guys can look at look this Nuts, up. Nuts, grain. Yeah, so there's, you know, yeah. essential fatty acids, some like good, uh, you know, um, stuff that uh, that can help, um, you know, with with the brain. Like walnuts are really good, um, and mm-hmm. kind of carrying those around with you. And I think a lot of the times, <laughs> <She could, she laughs> <could, yeah. laughs> yeah, Morgan brings her nutcracker with her <laughs> when she goes. She oh, it's really funny. I brought it. I always have nuts in my bag, which yeah. is so funny because Sean's a, the best trick. Everybody, just so you know, Costco, Costco has like a big um, organic nut. No, like an unsalted thing. Uh-huh. Best thing so you can ever get. So that's your hot tip. You got to go to Costco and yeah. get those unsalted nuts, guys. Okay? <laughs> and just yeah. put them in the container. We're like the... We're the suckers that go to like Oh, you're the Whole, Whole Foods. Foods. Oh my god. <laughs> Freeze in the bulk section of Whole Foods and as like as like, it's like the, 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah. As the, the bulk foods like thing is pouring into the bag, I just like think of like coins and money <laughs> <laughs> flying down. I'm like, ooh, can we like uh <laughs> let's slow it down, yeah. slow down, <laughs> Freeze is like just like hammering that thing. Oh my god. Like, it's not coming out fast enough. And I was like, we should bring our glass jars and like they weigh the glass jar. <laughs> We're using the plastic bags. Oh my bags. God. That's so He's funny. gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, nuts. Nuts yeah. is a big one. <laughs> yeah. Salmon, yeah. some oils. Right. Yeah, so for sure. That's, yeah, for sure. You got to do the brain healthy foods. Yeah. At least one person in the family has to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't skimp on your sleep, which mm-hmm. is a huge part yeah. of it. Sleep is so important. How much at night, how much sleep do you get, Brayden? Two kids now. Oh, what is it? God, um, <laughs> it's depressing looking at my uh, Apple Watch tracking, sleep tracking, because I'm. I would say average is about five and a half hours a night. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. What about you guys? Like, it's that lately. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's bad. Like, it's not. You know, it doesn't. You know, you notice it, right? It, yeah. After, yeah. If I don't catch up after like a couple weeks mm. uh, and get like a, you know, one or two nights of at least seven hours, eight hours, it starts to like really, really wear on yeah. you Tack and, your, on and your mood and everything really starts to go downhill. So I'm I'm mm-hmm. trying to get better at it. But yeah, five and a half hours or so. They mm-hmm. say yeah. you should have eight hours of sleep a night. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the people have the time to do that. <laughs> do, how many hours do you get? I mean, I get enough. I keep on saying that. What that that? Yeah, what <laughs> define and You know, I I uh this is my second child. I know how this goes. Okay, guys. Yeah. So I'm way more like, okay, I'm there for my girl right now, and that's where. But I do get about four and a half <laughs> to six and a half hours of sleep, depending on the night. Mm-hmm. And my other son, like last night, he was like, Mom, <laughs> mommy, come here. And then I had to take, you know, give Lenny and then go and give. And I co-sleep. People are going to funny. I do co-sleep with my child. So I do get a little bit more room, Mm -hmm. you know. But I do remember the times where Quinn was just my only kid. And I got, gosh, I got 10 hours, like eight hours of sleep. It was so good. So I'm ready for sleep training. She's almost six months. So I'm ready there. Mm. Almost there. Yeah, sleep is is so important. And I think... 
you know, they Some say, people need less. Like yeah. you need less. Like yeah. Mike can really? sleep. Yeah, Mike can. Mike I was yeah. going to say, I pegged Mike as like a no, his eight wife's hour like that. kind of guy. Yeah. Huh. He's a good, you know, like there's like a good balance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. I, so don't ask me about sleep because I've never <laughs> liked sleep. Even when I was a kid, I just. You're just wasting time. <laughs> yeah, well, not wasting time. I just like a couple things. Like I just don't need a, like I don't feel like I need a lot of sleep. I right, feel refreshed yeah. after five hours of sleep. Yeah. I think that's the most I sleep is is five hours a night. Uh-huh. Um, been crazy mm-hmm. and that's so good and yeah, like awesome. I've been like that for since I was a kid like even when it's funny like my friends and I go on vacations and they're all like sleeping until like 10 or 11 and I'm like up at 6 and I'm I like don't know how people I'm gonna go check in. out the, the town and I'm always like <laughs> checking out the town by myself <laughs> and they would call me but yeah like I, I'm not so you gotta know your own body and know your own mm-hmm. body clock and how it works and uh, I think that's one thing you Arlene and I have in common is yeah. that we we can actually just like get up and and like wake up early. Yeah. But our, our CFO yeah. <laughs> yeah, he needs like, to sleep. He sleeps. And yeah. we're like, we're gonna go go have like a coffee in the morning, yeah, right? Obviously, the smartest person needs to sleep. The smartest person needs to sleep. <laughs> the one with the numbers is yeah, like, you he's know. gotta do it like I know. He's got it. Um, yeah. but that's great. And the next another big one for from tips for better mental health is just to find purpose and meaning. We mentioned that before. Mm-hmm. Finding purpose and meaning. Yeah. Um, I think the you know, I I think that the best way that I've kind of used uh, tools that I use to kind of discover what that is, is, okay. is by journaling and writing mm-hmm. um, and, you know, really kind of thinking about the the peak moments of, of your life and where you're the happiest and kind of reflecting on what parts of that moment made it really special. Was it like, you know, connecting with others? Was it, um, you know, high performance? Was it, uh, you know, uh, creating? Was it, um, you know, performing art or doing something new? Like you got to really know what, uh, you know, what that uh, nucleus of that, of that, uh, uh, of that happiness was, and then try to like, you know, try to uh, recreate it and, and test it again. So like, I think, uh, that happens in discovery uh, by by like it happened. It helped me to write write down everything and kind of go from. Where do there. you go to write? Well, I just do it at, at home. Like so, I I spend. I have a personal journal, yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, so I have a work journal and I have a personal journal. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, my personal journal has a lot of notes about Morgan. <laughs> Where's my? Hate? I'm so lucky to have this girl in my life. Where's my I've only section? had good like. Oh, it's the whole thing. <laughs> Is that a bulldog? Yeah. 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 I have only that's it. But yeah, like you should have a. I, I think for people, oh my God, for some, I think for some people, it's um, you need to make that a priority. I think mm-hmm. like one of the other big tips is really take that take up that time to make like make a leisure and compilation time for you to kind of. Um, be out by yourself leisurely, right? By yourself, you know, spend the time by yourself. It's the same thing with finding your purpose and meaning. It's finding those places. And I think a lot of people that are listening to this podcast, they're just, they don't plug it in. They don't plug it in for, as a necessity. They don't put it into their um, calendars as a regular thing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's Mm -hmm. Monday morning. So I'll just literally block it out. Like it's like, because I like waking up, have a coffee, listen to some classical music and just like writing. And that's at the office or it's at my home office. And you, without that time to just think it, you, for me, my creativity is like gone, right? Like you have to do it. So I think the tip for everybody is put it into your schedule Mm -hmm. for yourself, like to find that purpose, to find that meaning to listen to yourself, to do those leisurely things. Mike used to walk. He used to just, remember you just scheduled times that you just would go yeah, for a walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'd see, you see that in his calendar, like Mike's on a walk during that time and he would just think and that's, you need to spend those times for yourself, right? Yeah, for sure. And the last one is appeal to your senses. What is that? So, uh, you know, obviously we have five senses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, know what kind of sense you kind of uh, so for example for some people it's the sweet sultry sound of my voice <laughs> it's ASMR, yeah. ASMR. What is it? ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. ASMR. <laughs> yeah of course Morgan's like sucking a soother right now <laughs> Sean likes that stuff right no. 
<laughs> we were laughing about it because on Brooklyn Nine Nine, if you watch that funny okay, show, no, Brooklyn Nine, yeah. you watch Brooklyn. Anyways, so, yeah. he, he came on as like a, I am a, a, like an ASMR influencer, and he talked like that. <laughs> like the whole entire show was so funny. <laughs> right. So a lot of TikTokers like yeah. It. So like understanding what gives you joy. So mm-hmm. that could be you know like looking going to a museum and looking at the you know beautiful art or or going out and to the mm-hmm. top of a mountain and looking over the scenery and that would be a visual type of sense and obviously there's a smell you know so that's aromatherapy mm-hmm. uh, you know yes. you'd love to go to sage or something like that <laughs> and, and uh, smell up a storm or you know that's you know listening or touch and feel like maybe getting a massage or something like that so it just depends on so who important. you are yeah. yeah what sense do you like to appeal to touch yeah yeah like massage facials hair Anything to make me look good. <laughs> no, I, I enjoy No, actually, one of my spiritual healers, when I got into a really bad car accident, I felt like I was like an out-of-body experience. Mm-hmm. I think I've mentioned this before. And uh, No, you haven't. What happened? So I got mm-hmm. into a big car accident. Okay. We hit a deer going up to Kelowna. Oof. We totaled the car and our car like did a massive 360 into a bridge and we could have all died. Wow. And uh, me and my two friends were all together. And um, luckily no one got like severely hurt. We all took like MRI scans. Like they went through the whole thing. But I felt so out of touch with myself. Like I really, f- I was like, I was telling my my husband, boyfriend at the time, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be a realtor anymore. Like it became, I was really just like, I didn't feel but connected. Into a different perspective. Yeah, right? like it, no, it, like I didn't feel connected to oh, my okay. body. Okay. Like I wow. felt like I was so out of my body, and so I was talking about it so much. And they said to me, like, you have to do a couple things to get back grounded in your soul and your your actual self. And um, she said, sleep is very important. You need to indulge. So basically, eat whatever you want. If you don't feel, if you are limiting yourself with diet and you don't feel like yourself. It, that's going to constantly become like go go at it like get the get the Lee's donuts so get the cinnamon bun for, two for dime for twelve ninety nine but actually all I wanted was my dad's chicken like I wanted like like you know there was like funny things that I needed comfort food but yeah. one of them was massage she said you need to let somebody else's like energy go into your body mm-hmm. and really feel it out. And that was super important. So I think, yeah, I think that's my sense for sure. That was a, that was a big trauma then. That could have been, that was a turning point for you then. It was right. It was probably about a year before I met, met you. Around really? that. It was that, that close. I was living at the Alto and it was, it was like, it was bad. Like it was like a bad episode. Like it was not good. Yeah. Yeah. And then because it was like no one's fault, like they were it's like- kind of the deer's fault. The doll, deer, this is so crazy. The deer, um, thank you, Jason Feinstead. He might be listening to this. He picked us up all the way up, all the way up, like past hope and everything. We were on the on the highway and my girlfriend's brother came all the way up there to pick us up at the mm. hospital. So thank you for that. Jeez. But it was, uh, it was like a pretty traumatic thing. <laughs> well, when you face your mortality, right? Yeah, it was like, it was... Yeah, it was not um, a joke for sure. But it was one of those things that I realized I that healing, it was a healing process. And that sense of mine was so strong. And that's why I believe in the power of massage. Um, but not just like hokey pokey massage, like um, like not RMT massage, like body work, which is a big thing. So yeah, it's like touching from your toes all the way up to your head mm-hmm. kind of thing. That's, you know, I think every everyone in their journey has kind of turning points and like, you know, uh, forks in the road mm-hmm. and, you know, where, you know, there's, there's a bit of that uncertainty and what, what next. And I think it's good to check in with yourself and to, you know, think about what you can do proactively to, uh, to make things better. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, what I've learned in, in my life is that things do get better. You know, if you're going through a real tough time, um, I myself have gone through tough times and, um, you know, my friends have gone through some tough times and it does get better. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, hurting yourself or, you know, hurting others is not, you know, the, the, the answer. And, you know, I was, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it, yeah. It, it's the key, the key thing here, I think in this, in this, especially this part two is get help if you need it. Yeah. Get help if you need yeah. it. And, uh, you know, we were really fortunate, um, to have a, you know, a good community around us mm-hmm. here. Um, 
uh, at Oakwind. At Oakwind. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the agents have developed deep bonds and friendships. And I know that uh, they've helped each other out and not just in real estate stuff, but in, in life stuff. And, you know, I was going through a hard time and I called a couple agents at the office and we went for drinks. Um, and it was like, I just, I needed to reach out to a couple of the dads and hang out. And, and basically talk crap about their, <laughs> about their wives. <laughs> What's that about guys? Practical tips about <laughs> yeah. relationships. Uh, <laughs> but also just like, you know, it was funny. Uh, yeah. I think that they thought I was calling because they were getting like some coaching or <laughs> from me. But I was like, I was like, oh, I need guys. your coaching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm screwed here, guys. Uh, but yeah. And it's just like, you know, it was, it was really fantastic. And, and, you know, it, it, if they were weren't around and I didn't have those friendships. I, I don't know, you know, and, and things have really taken a turn for the better um, because of a lot of things that they've, you know, tips they gave me, tools they gave me, advice they gave me, but also just like being able to just verbalize um, things that were, that I've been writing in my journal to other people and that I'm not so like good. looking at it just myself and being like, oh, like I'm never going to get out of this. <laughs> it's basically therapy, right? Yeah, like being able to yeah. put and it out there. For sure. And, you know, but being proactive and reaching out and, I, you know, obviously if I didn't reach out, then then that wouldn't have uh, occurred. So, you know, I think yes. that that's really, yes. you know, it's it's really important to, to you know, not be a passenger and passive in, in a lot of these things and really, really, um, you know, Make, make some of those efforts. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Well, that is it, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for listening to the Oakland Podcast. Mm -hmm. We hope you got a little tips for this mental health, well, mental health and wellness and wellness series. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed our podcast, right. please read us five out of five on your review um, and star on any platform that you're currently listening. But also if you're an agent from another office or you'd like to know a little bit about Oakwind, please go to oakwind.com slash join. Go into that message box, put pod 2021 um, and you will receive a free mystery swag piece yeah. by entering that promo code. And you might even get to speak to one of the Oakland representatives. Yeah, for so sure. Thanks. Yeah, look forward to meeting you guys. Until next time, thanks so much for listening to the Oakland Podcast. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye. <laughs>